All right, you know what time it is. Hey, folks, John here, Altakery Forge. Welcome back. If it's your first time here, welcome. If you didn't gather from my weedy little intro, what's going on today? We're attempting Crucible Steel again. If you've seen the first video, you'll know quite a few things went wrong the first time I tried this. So we're going to do a few things differently. I'll kind of talk about them as we go. A few people have asked uh, what I did with the piece that I was able to salvage from the last thing, and I said I was going to use it for the 10,000 subscriber giveaway. Here is what we got. I kind of wanted to make like a small sack so that I had a piece of antelope horn I was going to use. It's one of those things that looks really cool in your head, but as it starts to come together, you're like, ah, that thing sucks. It looks stupid. I don't like it. So, you know, I did learn a lot from forging this out, but I'm just not happy. And it did heat treat well. I'll give it that. I didn't see any cracks or anything like that, but I'm not happy with the way it's coming out. So it's getting tossed. I got bigger plans for this thing, and that's what we're going to be using for the giveaway, assuming it turns out. So, uh, Let's get moving. So here's what we got to start with. We got a uh, clay graphite crucible. I've gone ahead and baked in the oven at 300 for an hour and a half to drive off any excess moisture just so it doesn't crack during the firing. Over here, I got 1,500 grams of mild steel to use as our base material. I've already measured all this out. Last time I did this, I used wrought iron, and it turned out fine, but uh, you never really know what's in wrought iron. It can have impurities like manganese, sulfur, you know, phosphorus, things like that in it. And if I want to be able to make this stuff on any kind of repeatable basis, I need to know what I'm using. So I'm using mild steel. Last time we were aiming for a carbon content of 1.5% and we used 23 grams of charcoal powder. I'm aiming a little lower for 1.4, so I got 20 grams here. Right here, I got a little tiny chunk of W2 tool steel to use as a source of vanadium. Supposedly vanadium is what causes the carbides to dendro out of... I don't vanadium is what makes it look pretty, supposedly. If you ask 10 people how to make crucible steel, you're going to get 12 different answers. There really doesn't seem to be a whole lot of definitive information out there. You know, if there is, I haven't found it. But anyway, that's what we got to go in the crucible. So uh, let's get this thing packed. So last time I did this, I put a bunch of borax in here after the charcoal powder, thinking it would help with keeping everything clean or something like that. And our crucible actually ruptured during firing. And I think the reason for that is the borax is really acidic at high temperatures. And also, as these clay graphite crucibles heat up, they kind of soften up. And I think, you know, the combination of this being porous and the borax being acidic, I think that's what caused it. So we're not going to use any borax. We're just going to bash up this jar real good, throw the glass in there to flux the charge, uh, build a little cap on it, and keep moving. So what I got here, uh, just Satanite refractory mortar. I'm gonna use it to kind of build a cap over the crucible to keep air out. If you watched the last video, I don't think it was actually in the video, but after I built this cap, I basically just let this thing dry overnight. And whenever I went to fire it, there still was a lot of moisture in here. And there was a lot of popping and cracking and whatnot that happened. And I think that might've let some air into the charge, which might be another reason we had so many air bubbles in the finished ingot. So after I get this cap built, I'm actually going to dry this thing in the oven, and then it'll be fired tomorrow. So, that'll do it, really. So, like I said, we'll throw this guy in the oven for a couple hours, bake all the moisture out of the uh, the cap, and then we'll fire this guy tomorrow. All right, so here we are about to run the smelt furnace. I actually had to put a new burner in, because a while back this thing got kicked over and the manifold broke off the last one. So that's why it's held in there with a brick, but it's, uh, it's fine, it ain't going nowhere. Got the gas tank over here in the slack tub so it doesn't freeze up. Got our air piped in. We'll fire it up, let it come up to heat, and uh, get moving. Alrighty, got the furnace fired up. It's kind of sputtering right now, which isn't uncommon. As the chamber heats up and the fuel combusts correctly, the river burner will kind of fix itself. And once we get that to where we can uh, play with the mix a little more, we'll crank the air up, crank the gas up, and let this thing come up to heat. See what I mean? After about 10 minutes or so with uh, the residual heat building up, it's burning like it should. So we're going to let that thing run for about 20 minutes, get nice and warm before we put the crucible in. So it's been about 20 minutes, furnace is heating up real nice, using a piece of scrap steel as a probe here. We're pushing about 2,000 degrees or so, which is about where I want to put the crucible in. So uh, we're going to cut the gas, take the lid off, put the charge in, put the lid back on, and uh, keep moving. I 
decided to leave the furnace running while putting the charge in just because even for that few seconds that the lid is off you lose a lot of heat and uh, the flame hitting the crucible actually kind of degrades it which I think is part of the reason the uh, the other one failed is because it was in there for so long so I'm trying to go from solid to liquid inside the crucible as fast as I can so I wanted to save heat but anyway we got that guy in there we'll uh, let it come up until we can't see into the furnace anymore start the timer cook it for 60 minutes last time we did 90 and I think that's part of why the crucible failed also so when we get to white heat 60 minutes and we'll see what we got all right so it's been heating up for about 45 minutes we can't really see the shape of the crucible too good anymore so I'm confident we're getting to melting heat so I'm gonna start the timer 60 minutes and we'll see what we got all righty it's been 60 minutes I've gone ahead and cut the gas in the air I'm gonna let that thing cool on its own for however long it takes that to cool on its own i'm probably gonna go get some lunch and then just come back and see if i can mess with it but uh you know hopefully we got some good material in there so here's what we got after letting this thing sit for about an hour and a half it's still a little warm but i can touch it without getting hurt i don't hear any rattle when i shake it so that's good hopefully that means everything in there is solid but let's crack this thing open this is pretty cool i feel like a kid at christmas Alrighty, well, this is definitely not what I wanted to see. You know, there's still pieces in there. It looks like it started to melt, but maybe we didn't cook it long enough, so uh, I'm going to take a chance and throw this thing back in the furnace and see what we can come up with. So, here we go again. I threw a bunch more glass in here. Ideally, this should melt before the charcoal powder gets hot enough to burn and keep everything sealed up and let us be able to see into the crucible so I know when everything's liquid. At least that's what I'm hoping for anyway. This time we're gonna put it in there and let the furnace come up to heat with it in there and uh, let it come up to white and cook it for another hour and see what we got. So you can't really see into the furnace because the sun's hitting it, but the glass is starting to melt and I haven't seen any sparks from the charcoal burning, so that's good. I don't know how this is gonna go. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm just kind of figuring this out, so uh, bear with me. All right, we're pushing white heat again. The furnace has been heating up for about half an hour, so I'm going to start the timer, give it 60 more minutes. But if I look in there after that and I don't like what I see, we're going to keep going. This stuff's going to be steel whether it likes it or not. All right, folks, it's been about an hour. You probably can't see on camera, but if I put on sunglasses like uh, the kind you use to run your cutting torch, I can still see chunks of steel that are sticking up above the molten glass. So... I'm just going to keep this thing running and check it every 15 minutes or so and record how long it takes either until we get good material or until that gas tank runs out. So, like I said, this is going to be steel whether it likes it or not. All right, folks, we actually ran out of gas right at the three and a half hour mark, which is where I was going to call it anyway. I don't really know what to expect. I know you can't really see in there, but I can. And there's still looks like there's some chunks of steel on the top, but it looks like a good bit more of it has melted on them. I don't know, we're gonna let that cool for a minute. We're gonna pull the crucible out of there, smash it up and see what we got. Alrighty, let's crack this baby open and see what we got. All right, folks, after cracking open the crucible, <laughs> here is what we got. <laughs> it looks like we did get some melting going on down around here. I'm not even going to bother spark testing that or anything of the sort to see if it saturated the carbon like it was supposed to. The, I don't want to say this is an unmitigated failure because we did learn some things. The borax was definitely responsible for the crucible rupturing last time because this was cooked for a total of four and a half hours and the crucible held up more or less fine but uh it just seems like we weren't reaching the same temperatures as before which is odd because you know of course we changed out the ribbon burner itself but the ribbon burner was constructed in the same way as the last one 
uh, you know, all the settings were the same, everything. The only thing I, th I can think of is the refractory that the furnace is cast out of might be starting to degrade, which doesn't surprise me. When I first got into this, I talked to a gentleman who, uh, Cattail Ironworks, who did this same thing pretty much, and he said every two or three firings he had to completely rebuild the furnace. So this monstrosity is getting thrown in the trash. I am, uh, I've already got another crucible ordered and I'm planning, I'm designing a new furnace that I think is going to work a lot better. So there's that. You win some, you lose some. They say what separates a master from a novice is the master has failed more times than the novice has tried. And this was a pretty hard fail, but uh, that's all I got for you. If you like what you saw, like, share, subscribe, all that jazz. Always more cool stuff coming. Uh, if you want to support me, there's links to the Patreon uh, and the Etsy if you want to purchase some of my work and links to the social media. If you want to follow me in the description below. But like I said, that's all I got for you. Y'all take care.